Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a road trip, a planty road trip. I'm going to Kentucky to see my family for something for my sister. I'm actually filming that vlog on my vlog channel, but I'm so excited because we are stopping along the way because I've got my baby with me and I, you know, you gotta stop every couple hours. So I figured that we would make the most of it and at each stop or at least like close to each stop, I am finding a plant shop. And right now, I'm at Greenscape Gardens outside of St. Louis. And I am telling you, this place is so cute. Like, I'm very obsessed. I cannot wait to show you what everything looks like. There's so many beautiful trees and just beautiful garden plants. Their signs are really beautiful. They have a whole section for natives. I was so impressed by the selection of plants at this shop. There's a whole section of like rare or like internet famous plants that I did not get to film, but I saw it as I was walking out. You guys, I'm telling you, every permanent Epipremnum are having a moment. And another plant that had a moment a while ago that I think we all totally forgot about is the Ileonema pictus tricolor. I saw one in person and it was not that expensive. Super cool. If this was my local garden center or this wasn't the first stop that I made on this road trip, I would have gotten myself into some serious trouble because number one, the Fetonia, all of the beautiful sirens of the plant world, AKA Marantisiae, Galathea, Capertia, they came out in full force. They showed up and showed out. I was so impressed. And as a side note, look at how beautiful the benches are in this greenhouse. The wood tone was honestly just so beautiful and it made everything look so much nicer. I'm gonna take notes if I ever open a garden center. If you didn't know, I grew up in Arizona so seeing cacti and succulents and euphorbia always takes me back to home and I absolutely love seeing them potted in beautiful Talvera pottery and I'm gonna go back to again I'm really sad well yeah I am sad that this was my first stop because I would have come home with these hanging cacti look at these rat tails they were so beautiful and the the um, rickrack was also so beautiful these succulents i've never been attracted to succulents really in a big way but they were so plump and beautiful and honestly if it couldn't get any better the pottery at this place went crazy i was loving the pottery the pottery alone could have like cashed out my bank account this is so pretty and it's giving me so much inspo for when i start up my pottery again i which you know i signed up for another pottery session by the way so i just love seeing pots to get you know inspiration i loved this head planter i think it'd be so pretty with like a big fern or something in it and the mushrooms okay the mushrooms are gonna be like what owls were in the 2010s but that's fine i have so many mushrooms in my home i love them they're so dang cute all of these pots were so beautiful they all reminded me of my mom all these floral pots another this this section gave me inspo for my future pottery endeavors but yeah i love a good pot and if you're looking for pottery <gasps> look at this cane you guys know me you you know i should have brought this home i didn't it's so beautiful though this is also so beautiful. I thought it would look really nice in my cabinet. So there's a lot of lessons that I'm learning in my journey of being a parent. And one of them is that I need to set my expectations <laughs> so much lower. So we only ended up going to two plant places, but the second place was in Louisville, Kentucky, and we went to Wallish Garden Center. I am certain I am not saying that right. So apologies there, but it was so beautiful. I noticed that they make their own plant soil mix, which I think is amazing. I did also drop off some samples of De La Tanks to both of these places. So if you are a local at either of these nurseries, maybe ask them about it and see if they plan on stocking De La Tanks because that would be awesome. But yeah, again, just love the variety of plants in this place. This Maranta was so beautiful. And another plant that I think we've forgotten about, the Pilea peperomioides. It's so pretty, so cute. Oh my gosh, I love garden centers that have just like little novelty items like that snail watering can. It's so beautiful. If it was like not ceramic, I probably would have bought it for Nora in the future. <laughs> um, also, there were some Hoya here that had the biggest leaves ever. You really can't tell how big they are. I should have put my hand up for scale. These were so big and I wanted to bring it home. But again, I was trying to be good, but this was on my way home. So I did pick something up. So I would love for you to guess out of all these things you're seeing, what from this place did I buy? 
because I did get something and I'm super excited about it. You're going to see it in a few minutes. But yeah, I loved seeing the variety of all of the different plants. I've never seen this ZZ before and I'm so upset I did not film the name of it. I thought it was chlorotic and like sick. So that's why I initially walked over to it, but it, it wasn't. That's just what it looked like. It was super cool. And of course, the Brantiatum. They look so good in the nursery and look so bad when you bring them home. <laughs> all in all, it was a really, really beautiful nursery and I'm so glad that I stopped. Hi, I did buy a plant and this is my new beautiful Monstera Esquilino. I have never seen one in person. It's basically just like a souped up Adansonii. That's not a, like, that's really not what it is at all technically, but as far as its appearance, yeah. It looks like Mama Monstera's leaves, like her most mature leaves, but they're at the bottom of the plant. It is the next day after I got back from this trip and it is raining outside and very gloomy. So I thought that I would do a little repot of this. I'm doing a little bit of pot roulette because I want this to be in the pot that I have my elbow in. I was just looking at this the other day and realizing how silly it looks that this tiny plant has this huge pole or um, plank. So I am still going to train it on a plank, but it needs to be significantly smaller. And this, I'm actually going to put on a wood pole in this pot. So. I do think I need to go get that wood pole. I think it's outside, but I just wanted to get the process started here. I don't really know exactly what pole situation I want to use. I might use this plank, but I was also thinking about using just like a pole like this one. It's a two by two, but like, I wish that it was more like three by three or round, like the one that I had for Mama Monstera. I am going to just dig in to this pot and see kind of what we're working with in this root system. Look, we got some some roots at the bottom here. And I believe that this is cocoa peat that it's in. This does not look like peat moss, which is great because cocoa peat is a great alternative that I really like. Oh, this just feels so nice to put my fingers in. This is definitely not peat moss. It's like soft and fluffy, I love it. What I'm going to do is I'm sort of like shifting these aerial roots to be towards the middle so that I can position, I think I'm gonna do that two by two so that I can position that right in the middle. So I'm going to just sandwich it right there and then kind of press those aerial roots against the wood so that it knows that it's there more or less. How tall would this be? I think it's gonna be too tall. I'm gonna trim this down a little bit. BRB. Also, something to mention is this wood is treated, so I'm not worried about rot really at all. And now I have the task of doing a little bit of roulette. So I guess I'm going to have to put a lot of this cocoa peat back in the pot. Ooh, did you guys hear that thunder? We actually currently have a tornado warning. I don't think that's gonna happen. Oh, I'm never really worried about tornado warnings here because nobody else seems to be. One time we had a tornado warning and I like ran to the store and got a weather radio and like I was trying to stock up on supplies because I was so stressed and like literally nobody else was. And I was like, oh, <laughs> so I guess, I guess we just don't care. It was a little jarring that nobody seemed to care, but it's all normal, I guess, for them here. I honestly feel like I could just like stick my fingers in this and pluck out the plant because these are two fresh cuttings, more or less. Ooh, they don't even need a pot that big. What pot should I put them in? Or I could consolidate it with this because these are both elbows. They're from different original plants and the leaves do look different. But in the spirit of consolidating my collection, I think that this would be a good move. So we're gonna do it. We're not gonna put too much thought and have any regrets. We're just gonna do it. Cause this is not attached in any way. So we can kind of shift things around. See now maybe this big pot 
might be necessary because Monstera do tend to get some pretty heavy root coverage. This is the other half of the pole that I just cut. Just burying that part right there. In the center, I'm going to put this kind of, actually I'm going to intersperse it in the roots. There we go. I feel like it needs an even bigger pot than this, like if I'm being totally honest. But we're just gonna, we're just gonna see. I have some other cuttings from this plant that will be potted up in the next couple of months. So I guess when that happens, I can repot it again because I my goal is to pot them all back in here and to just have like a bunch of plants in this single pot so that it's very full just because I don't feel like there's a reason to have so many of the same plant and I had to propagate it because it was just looking a bit leggy. But the two cuttings that I took that I'm currently rooting, I took with the intention of keeping but maybe I won't keep both. Maybe I'll just keep the top cuts and then give the other half, give the other cutting away. We'll see. All right, here we are. She's complete. I don't know if I love the way that this looks. <laughs> I think that I liked the way that the plank looked a lot better. But we're gonna live with it for, you know, like I said, a couple of months until I need to repot the other plants. But it looks, to me, this looks funny because, and maybe that's just because I'm used to seeing it with the plank. But now that I have this free and available pot, time to pot this lady up. Like I said, I'm sandwiching the pole between these spots that have big aerial roots to hopefully encourage these roots to latch on. Because if this plant started climbing, that would be pretty great. Get in the pot. She is potted up. Okay. 